there is a day to go before the Lake District is reached. A walk across the rolling Pennine Fells of Westmoreland, the sites of many settlements that predate Roman times. The route leads to Kirby Stephen, an old town which is longer than it is wide, and where the market has had a charter since 1351. Its river, the Eden, leads to the Solway Firth. Just east of Kirby is Smardale Fell, leading down to Smardale Bridge, the edge of what was once believed to be a thriving prehistoric settlement known today as Severals. short diversion from the walk leads up Scandal Beck to the north and to more recent evidence of how times change. The first viaduct across the Beck is now unused, but it once was the most beautiful stretch of the Tebeer to Darlington railway line. At the head of the valley is another railway viaduct, part of the much disputed Settle to Carlisle railway line, considered by many to be the most beautiful in the land. All this area is a paradise for archaeologists with its abundant evidence of all the ages of man. and with sinkholes in the fields like pockmarks on nature's cheek. The final leg to Shap reveals not so much traces left by ancient Britons, but the scars left by his modern successors. The swathe cut by the M6 motorway through the green fields may not be a walker's favourite topic for discussion, but it still has to be crossed. Alfred Wainwright, who devised the walk, argued that it was better to travel from west to east so that the weather was at the walker's back. Others say it is better from east to west so that the best bit, the Lake District National Park, is kept to last. For those going that way, the long overture is over. Let the opera begin. This, for many, the most beautiful region of England, was carved and rubbed smooth by the great glaciers of the Ice Age. And it remains today, especially from the air perhaps, 
virtually untouched and free from the ravages of man. The lakes, some as deep as the mountains that surround them, and others, small and high in the sky, like Angle Tarn, remain as traces of the glacial past. A long Kidsty Pike, leading to views of Ullswater and the town of Patterdale, the path reaches its highest point, over two and a half thousand feet. The lake poet, William Wordsworth, who walked to Oldswater by moonlight, described it, perhaps upon the whole, the happiest combination of beauty and grandeur which any lake affords. A few years earlier, the Reverend William Gilpin had agreed, although perhaps more pedantically, among all the visions of this enchanting country, we had seen nothing so beautifully sublime, so correctly picturesque as this. For those who are both poetic and hardy, the best views of Oldswater are from the slopes of Helvellyn, the highest mountain in the area, providing, of course, the cloud level permits. It is aptly called Striding Edge. The route along Drysdale Beck is the one taken by Victorian ladies and gentlemen returning to Grasmere after an assault on Helvellyn. It leads past Grysdale Tarn, at the outlet of which is the spot known as Brothers Party. Here, in 1800, William and Dorothy Wordsworth said goodbye to their brother John, who was leaving for Penrith and command of a ship. He was drowned when the ship went down off Dorset five years later. And beside the tarn, William wrote his elegiac verses in memory of my brother. 